Welcome, bet riders around the world. My name is Gary Solomon, and you're watching the Laidback Bike Report. Wow, what a treat to have you all with us today. We are back from Spetsy, Europe, having a great time uh, putting everything together that we can uh, share with all of you who weren't able to, uh, to go to Spetsy and see what goes on there. And today's special show is all about what uh, I and a few of my buddies here saw at Spetsy. So let me introduce, uh, first of all, the panelists that are on the show today. and We can, uh, we can uh, introduce them right now. So. Uh, first of all, uh, we have a very special guest from London, England. It's John Williams of Velo Ads. Hello, John. Hi, Gary. Good to be here. It is great to have you. John is a Velomobile expert extraordinaire, for those few of you who don't know that. Uh, and we're going to be talking to him uh, mostly about the Velomobiles uh, that were at Spetsy uh, this year. Uh, as always, we have our good friend Brian Ball from Bent Rider uh, with us today. Hello, Brian. Hello. Great to be here. Always my favorite show of the year. Yep. Uh, yeah. And also the uh, CycleCon one is uh, the favorite. Favorite yeah, yeah, show as well, right? Yeah. So, okay. Uh, Lars Kam is uh, is in uh, Germer. No, you're not in Germersheimer. You're in Salzgitter, Germany. I wish I I wish I were, but I'm not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lars was in Germersheim with me, and he's in Salzgitter, Germany. He's directing the show back again this month. Uh, it's great to have you with us, Lars. Hi, Gary. Hi, folks. And uh, our sports director, Denny Voorhees from Sarah, Pennsylvania. Hello, Denny. Hey, Gary. Glad to be back. We're glad to have you with us today. And the backbone of the show. Sometimes <laughs> it's a creaky sounding <laughs> backbone, but it is Trey Burgoyne, our media wrangler. Hello, Trey. Hello. Burgoyne. Burgoyne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of looked like the Brady Bunch. Uh, for, those of you, for those of you who don't know, uh, we started last month using uh, uh, another uh, platform for the show here, uh, StreamYard. And uh, so you'll see it looks a little bit different than what you were seeing in the past with our Google Hangouts. And we hope you'll enjoy the new format. So let's move along. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about subscribing to our YouTube channel. Um, it's really important if you haven't already done so to... Um, Click that little, whoop, whoop. yeah, right over there. There should be a little green uh, uh, layback bike report spot on your screen. And if you click that, you can subscribe on the YouTube channel. Click a little bell on that thing, and it will give you notifications uh, so that you'll know when we go live. Um, and also, if you want to find out more about the layback bike report, you should see a little... Yeah, it's no different than uh, Hangouts. I don't know why I'm having trouble pointing. Uh, you'll see a little uh, white eye pop up on the screen, and that uh, indicates information. It will send you to our website where you can find out a lot more there. Uh, how about the live chat? You know, we, um, we have the Google or the uh, YouTube live chat uh, every month, and uh, it, it really allows us to interact with all of you folks out there. You can ask your questions and make your comments. So... Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you will see it right off to this side. Uh, if you are on uh, mobile, uh, you can scroll down the screen and you'll see it below. Uh, and if you're watching on uh, Bent Rider, Facebook, or Twitter, uh, click the little YouTube logo in the bottom of your viewing screen. It will take you to YouTube, and then you can uh, join us on live chat. And I see a bunch of folks on live chat already. So uh, maybe before we get started, let me say hello to a few folks. Larry Hobbs, uh, Jersey Bent. Hello, Larry is here with us. Uh, Smart Bikes TV. Ah, hi guys. Uh, we met them in uh, in uh, Germany at Germersheim. They are doing a YouTube channel, and they uh, they have uh, started covering uh, Spetsy as well. You might check them. Smart Bikes TV. A nice family uh, effort there. And our friend uh, Joseph uh, Joseph Janning. Uh, hello, Joseph. Good to see you. 
Dam Runner, Derek Pyrie uh, from South Africa is with us. Desi Haha, hello. Uh, and uh, let's see, I guess that's about it for now. And Julie Lovegrove just popped in there. Hi, Julie and Mark from, uh, from England as well. All right, let's talk for a minute about our amazing sponsors. First of all, TerraCycle, makers of exquisite recumbent parts and accessories for your bent. And Trailside.bike, a fine recumbent bike shop on the Withlacoochee Trail in Florida. And Cruise Bike, designed for the cyclist who wants to ride farther, climb faster, and adventure more. All cruise bikes and frame sets ship free in the USA. And Lightning Cycles, the aerospace designed and race across America owning recumbent you've always wanted. All right, guys. Uh, so as I told you earlier uh, at the top of the show, we're going to talk about uh, what we saw at Spetsy. And uh, I thought, uh, Lars, if you want to bring uh, our four buddies on or three others. Yeah, there we go. Here are the three guys that uh, that were covering uh, Spetsy at uh, at one in one way or another. And uh, I wanted to start, if I could, guys, by asking you what the most impressive thing you saw at Spetsy was. There were a ton of things there, and we're going to look through a lot of pictures. But uh, Lars, let's start with you, if we could. What did you find the most interesting there? Well, the most amazing thing um, I noticed was how much um, the vendors put their focus on e-assist. I mean, there is not a single bike on uh, in the whole show that doesn't come with an option to to have an e-assist on. Yeah, that's it's exactly a, what I was going to say too. Yeah, it's a huge thing. So basically, that that uh, caught my eye the most. Yeah, we and we've talked about this now for a couple of years on the show about how you know it was starting to come on, and then it seemed like it was about half. Uh, of all the the bikes and trikes and velos that you saw, and now I, I have to say it even continues further. John, what about you? Oh, um, I suppose the uh, one of the best things I I think it has to be a, a velomobile. Um, I was really looking forward to the Alpha Seven, uh, maybe trying it out as well, and uh, the After Seven. So yeah, out of those two, that was the highlight. Definitely. All right, and we're going to have you talk more in depth about that. Go ahead, Brian. I was going to say on the electric assist thing, I think to me, the big, the biggest, uh, when I realized it, I went to the Wolf and Wolf booth, which if you guys watched last year's show, I love the Wolf and Wolf bikes. They're amazing out of uh, Switzerland. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bikes. And they had an electric assist Wolf and Wolf. And I oh, saw wow. it and I just thought, yeah, they've won. You yeah. Know, I knew the E assist has won. You know, yeah. it's just when Wolf and Wolf is making an e-assist, it's kind of just you know that's that's the way it's going, and that and, we're going to see more and more, and it's there's nothing stopping it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's essentially impossible for a manufacturer to yeah. ignore that at this point. I guess is what you're saying, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. All right, guys, let's uh, Trey. Let's go ahead and uh, start the slideshow up, and we will start talking about what we see. So. Uh, Lars and I uh, had the good fortune of uh, after landing, after we landed in uh, Frankfurt, Lars picked us up uh, and we went directly as we have in the last couple of years to HP Velotechnic. And when we got there, uh, we found Brian because Brian was there this year. And I think, uh, Brian, you spent a, a couple days there, didn't you? Yeah, or I spent a couple of days filming some stuff with him. It'll be out in a, you know, a couple of weeks or so. We're going to kind of space some stuff up. But yeah, I had a nice interview, sit down chat with Paul Holland, who I've known for 20 years, which makes us both probably feel old. <laughs> but uh, we, we talked about what's coming up with HP, their history, um, it's it's a pretty good interview. I'm very happy with it. That'll be out in a couple of weeks. But yeah, All I just right. spent some days hanging out with them. Next slide, please. And uh, yeah, Paul is the one of the co-owners. And of course, our good buddy Heiko Truppel. Truppel. And uh, Heiko is uh, kind of the um, uh, what the media manager, marketing manager there. Yeah. And uh, he's he's the liaison and a great guy. Um, and we just had, we always have a good time when we go there, it shows us around and uh, there's not much to see uh, as far as what's going on. Next slide, please. I think we have one more slide of them packing up and that's, yeah. And that's the reason why, because they're getting ready for Spetsy when we get there. So everything's yeah. pretty well shut down and, and getting packed up to go. 
is it a, it is an amazing logistical operation. It's like yeah. the Rolling Stones going on tour when they pack up. Yeah, and that's exactly right. And uh, and they have these big vans. They just they have it all planned perfectly. And uh, when you see uh, well, when you see our video uh, of the opening of of Spetsy, you're going to see uh, some of these uh, booths go up. These grand booths that they have, and uh, and you'll see how they unpack and put that together. So kind of interesting stuff. Okay, next one, Trey. So yeah, uh, so Friday, um, this is the beginning of the preparations for Spetsy. And uh, what beginning doesn't start with a good Frühstück? Yes, breakfast in Germany, which is just something that'll keep you going all day. And sometimes it has to. It's a wonderful thing. You could see the smiles on Lars in my face. And you know it was a good meal. So uh, that was uh, Friday morning. Let's go to the next one. And here's kind of what I was talking about a minute ago. This is the very beginning of, uh, of the setup in Hall 1. And uh, basically, you'll see to the left there, you'll see the beginnings of the HP booth. And to the right, by that white pillar, that's the ice booth that's starting to go up. Ice, uh, ice got there a little bit more timely this year. Usually, they show up at the last minute because they have a very long drive and are exhausted and haven't slept. But they seem better prepared this year. I've, so. I've never seen it that empty. I never get there that early. Uh, yeah. Well, we were, as you see, up in the balcony. And uh, Lars got some really interesting time-lapse photography of that that uh, you guys will oh, see cool. on uh, the video. So, all right, let's move along to the next one. And then the outdoor venue uh, on Friday. And they got a, everybody got a late start there. I think they had a, a late start in getting everything blocked off. But if you look carefully there, basically what you'll see are those two little tents. The one on the right is our buddies from TerraCycle. That Pat got there real early, uh, and he was helping Ice get set up, and he said, "What a up shocker that Pat was the first one there." Yeah, yeah. Uh, ac actually, <laughs> actually, I was asking the guy uh, supervising the setup of the fence uh, when the vendors are going to um, are going to set up um, for the footage and stuff, and they actually told me, "Oh, that would be not before two two p.m. or something." And it was like noon or so. <laughs> and uh, the the minute the minute he he uh, he told me that Pat rolled his tent out and began setting up. And so, yeah, he so is well. Johnny on the spot. So all right, Trey, let's go to the next one. All right, Trey, there we go. Yeah, we also bumped into this guy. Uh, you mm -hmm. might recognize him as uh, John Williams. Also, the guy that's on the show here, John. So you got there nice and early on on uh, Friday, and uh, uh, yeah. What what, what, did, what were you doing on Friday? What were you checking out? Well, on Friday, um, I headed straight towards the uh, Velomobile stand uh, for the Alpha and uh, tried to get a test ride in that, which I was lucky enough to do. And um, yeah, so that was that was great. Actually, I was pretty tired after the. It was a long drive from London over to uh, to Germersheim. Yep, but, and you um, had your son with you there too. Yeah, my eldest son came along as well because um, he he loves bikes, and um, he he was um, lovely young well, man too. Yeah, yeah, he's great. I mean, I, I mean, a nice was, kid, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was supposed to be helping me with filming and stuff, but he I think he he sort of decided to sort of hang out with the. Uh, the student girls who were manning the entrances for the show. Oh, and of course. Yeah, yes, he knew them all by yes, name very well <laughs> at the end. And um, he was always going off for a, a little walk to stretch his legs. And I thought, well, okay, cool. All <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Okay, uh, Trey, let's go on to the next one. Did, did you have something, Brian? No, that was it. No. Okay. That's okay. Nice, nice, the nice kid, yeah. All right. So uh, here is, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but this is the <laughs> Trident booth. And this is our buddy Lars. Uh, you know, from this picture, you can't tell if he's coming in for a rough landing or actually taking <laughs> off. But uh, the next picture, uh, if you would. Either train, way, it's we'll not try. graceful. It's not graceful, but there he is uh, <laughs> trying out the arrow early on. Uh, so, and we're going to talk about why there's a green speed at Trident in, in a few minutes. But uh, kind of an interesting development there as well. But uh, Lars, uh, tell us what you thought of the arrow. Let me get you on here. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> <laughs> after I insulted you, tell I mean, us getting, get, getting into this thing uh, is one story. <laughs> uh, riding it was very, 
well uh, unusual because i was not used to the to the tank steering and this thing is just so sensitive so when you touch it it goes around the corner and it's like i almost crashed this thing but getting out was well a story for another day because i could not get out of this trike without help no way it was so <laughs> a, a so low and flat <laughs> yeah Pardon? it was pretty low all right so also traditionally on uh, friday after setup uh, in the evening uh, many of the folks uh, that are uh, have something to do with Wish Betsy and are there in Germersheim head to a place called Ziggelai. I hope I'm saying that right, Lars, and it's uh, or the Brickyard, and right along the Rhine. And uh, notably, uh, most of the velomobiles that are there love to to park all together like that, make a show of it, and we have a dinner and talk and uh, uh, just a fun way to kind of kick off uh, Betsy. And this year was no different. Uh, lots of folks, uh, greetings of old friends and that sort of thing. And Anybody? Thanks, Go thanks ahead, Brian. Gary, thanks, Gary, for pointing. I never been to this before. I've been to Spetsy, uh, I don't know. I think this was my eighth year, and I'd never been to that before, and it was a lot of fun. Best, yeah. best, uh, best schnitzel I've ever had, probably. Yeah. It was yeah. really, really good. If you're looking for schnitzel, it's a great place to great place yeah. to go. They have uh, they have good food there as well, not too expensive. So You guys had to watch me house a schnitzel. Yeah, that's right. It I was, was very uh, hungry. <laughs> oh, I wish we'd have pictures of that. <laughs> All right. So anyways, Saturday morning. So it is time for uh, Spetsy to open almost. And uh, there you see, uh, instead of down on the main floor off to in a corner like we had been in past years, uh, Lars and I decided to go up into the balcony, which was kind of uh, deserted. And we found a, a great place for us to just kind of uh, set up camp uh, for uh, everything that we did at Spetsy. It was nice. Tables and chairs to relax on. And so uh, I was going over a few last minute details and getting ready to go. So let's go on to the next one. And uh, there are the crowds starting to pour in as they do. Uh, as I've mentioned in the past, uh, the estimates are somewhere on the order of 10,000 people that come over the two days to uh, to see Spitzy. And uh, they'd look like a great crowd again this year, even though the weather was a little iffy, as you will see as we continue. Next one, please. Try. I thought at first that it didn't seem like there was many as many people like in line and stuff. But then as the day went on, especially on Saturday, it was I was as, just as packed as it ever has been. I, I agree. I think it was it seemed to be like a yeah. late arriving crowd. But yep. yeah. And so there you are there um, preliminarily before going through the door, before it opened, they're checking out the halls and seeing where they want to go and that sort of thing. Let's go to the next shot. And uh, there's the crowd just about ready to walk through the doors. There's, uh, you know, it has been cr more crowded than that, as Brian said, but it did pick up a little bit later on. Go ahead. And there I am leading the crowd through. Well, I think I'm leading the crowd through. They probably didn't even notice me being there, and I was lucky not to get run over. But the doors opened, and uh, and into Spetsy Hall One we went. Next, all right. So there is a nice shot from overhead. We have a couple of these just to give you an idea of the scope. This is the main hall, Hall One, and uh, you can see the people piling in there. You can see the HP uh, booth off to the upper left, and uh, you can see a few things from there. Next one, we'll get more close-ups here. And then the kind of the other side of the hall, uh, seeing what it looked like. Yeah, Hazard's right there, some booze up on the stage that uh, that they have. It's just the space is very well used and uh, very crowded. So, all right, next slide, please. All right, so uh, in this shot, you can kind of see the, the Haza uh, trike and also Raider Verk. Uh, let's go, let's uh, go to the next slide. I think we kind of starting start more with Raider Verk. And um, so these are Velomobile builders and also uh, retailers there in Germany. And they had a few things to show, but mostly what they're known for is uh, that orange Velomobile, the beautiful machine you see right there, which is the Milan. And uh, at this point, I think it's probably a good time to turn it over to John and he can talk to you about the Milan that he saw there. And and uh, and I think a little he had a little test ride as well. John, tell us about uh, your experience with Raiderwerk in Milan while you were at Spetsy, if you would. Yeah, the Milan SL is a Velomobile I've 
I've I've wanted to try for a long time. Um, there's only one guy, as far as I actually, there's two guys in the UK. Simon Sanderson and Lee Wakefield are the only two with the Milan SL. And uh, I've only seen Lee's, and Lee's maybe five foot six or something, so he's way too short for me to try his bike out. Um, and so that was one of my first ports of call when I got to Spetsy was to speak to, I think his name's Hel Helge or something? Helga, I think it's Helga. Yeah. Helga, yeah. So I said to him, uh, would it be possible if I could uh, ride one? Well, I emailed him before I got there anyway. And he said it may be possible because there was a young chap uh, called, uh, I think it was Martin. And uh, he was, uh, he'd already bought that orange one. And um, he said that it would be okay. He'd watched my YouTube channel, Velo Ads, before, and he said it would be okay. He'd trust me in it to take it for a ride. And uh, it was quite nerve-wracking because uh, I had to go back at the end of the show pretty much to ride it. And um, I just, as I got there, this young chap is handing over, you know, thousands of euros for this bike. And I'm thinking, oh, no, I don't I really, I can't scratch it or anything, you know. And it was, uh, yeah, it was phenomenal. John, look at your face. Good show. Yeah, Put that sorry. back up again. Put that. Look at John's face. <laughs> I've just been for a ride there, and I'm like rubbing right. my hands with glee. Right. You know. Now, awesome. did you put the hood down at any point when you were riding? Yeah, I, that's uh, the only time I lifted it up was uh, oh. when I when I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so, what? Tell me about what? So, tell me about your impressions. Uh, first impressions: the bikes like amazingly fast i i had a because i was wearing sort of dr martin boots uh, i had to ride it barefoot just in my socks and i it was like i was clipped in i just absolutely flew along um yeah it's it's really quick very responsive um slightly uh, it's quite noisy in there so a lot of the uh, you know the road uh, surface noise is transmitted inside the bellamobile um, John, I see. A, um, sorry to interrupt. There's a comment here from Kitten Teddy it says, "I think Patrick from Volomo bought the orange Milan." That's it, Patrick. That sorry, okay. Patrick. If he's so, thank you, this, Kitten Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> if Patrick's watching this, um, when I spoke to him on uh, when I was filming it after my ride, I kept calling him Martin, and uh, he he sort of looked at me a bit puzzled. And after I said his name three times wrong. Uh, he just said, oh, you know what, I'm just going to let him get on with it. He told me afterwards. And then I've called him Martin again. So, yeah, it's Patrick. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, it's a good thing we had heard from him. All right. Go ahead. So uh, the Milan was wonderful. You were you were pedaling in your in your sock, stocking feet, yeah. which I'm sure being John Williams, you're going to start a trend in that oh, yeah. regard. So. Yeah. Uh, look out, SPD uh, shoe uh, makers. All right. he, he's he's had SPD cleat mounts surgically implanted. Implanted on the bottom of his. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, you're the most dedicated guy I ever heard. Yeah. Of as far as I was. <laughs> look at that machine, though. Honestly, oh, isn't, they isn't are that, beautiful. Isn't that a yeah. beautiful thing? All right, very and it's good. In the best color, orange. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just yeah. gorgeous. All right, Trey, go ahead. Next one. Trey's, Trey's nodding his head. Yes, I see over there, too. Who wouldn't agree with that being the most beautiful thing? All right. Uh, so this is, uh, I think, uh, Brian, did you give me this? Or maybe it was Oliver sent this picture. It's Volomo. Uh, Volomo. Yeah. And uh, I really, as usual, don't get a chance to talk with those guys too much. Uh, Brian, did you have a chance to talk to them? Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of the same conversation I had before. They're just, they're very low volume. Yeah, and um, I kind of get get the impression from them they're making them as fast as they possibly can. So uh, I, I get the impression they're not super excited about even more exposure and just making their wait list longer. But it is an amazing trike, especially with Winchie to gone the way of whatever it's gone with. Uh, it, it is kind of I, I always think of it as like the spiritual uh, successor to Winchie. To they're similar in a lot of ways, but uh, a lot more advanced, and uh, they're super super cool though. Yep. Yeah, beautiful. and you go ahead. Were you going to say something else, John? Oh uh, yeah, beautiful machine, just stunning. Yeah, they are. They're they're gorgeous, and they seem to be very well designed. Uh, I was going to ask the question, but I see as Zorro in Hell has asked, "Is Velomo ever going to ship to the USA?" They don't. I know right now. I, I would highly, highly, highly doubt that from the conversations I've had with them. Basically, because they don't think they have uh, the manufacturing capabilities, of and and uh, up, huh? and the uh, you know U.S. liability laws and stuff like that. So right, okay, so yeah, the answer is probably not uh, Zorro. I'm sorry. 
All right. Let's see. Um, yeah. So I guess that uh, uh, Velomo was up on the stage there. And then there was HP. And uh, you're starting to see now what that whole booth looks like put together. You saw the beginnings of it a little bit earlier. Uh, and they just always bring a ton of trikes. You saw you saw the shop uh, back when they had everything packed up. And this is kind of what it looks like afterwards. So um, I had an extensive uh, interview conversation with Heiko uh, at HB. You'll see on the video as well. We'll talk about uh, what is new there. Um, but basically, they have uh, they have some new colors, and they're kind of in transition on a couple of things. You know, they had a they were hit hard by the uh, by the Go Swiss uh, uh, issue, where they uh, Go Swiss has uh, stopped manufacturing uh, that motor, and so they're kind of um, at this point reassuring people that they're going to continue to back that. And uh, I think uh, clearly going to be looking in a different direction to uh, to replace what that is. But there's uh, Heiko and I having a little chat. I, I think it's going to be something they have a bit more control over is kind of the, the impressions that I'm getting. So Yeah, I, I think they felt somewhat burned, yeah. so they didn't well, say it, that. It was, but... it was out of nowhere. Just they yep. were, there was no warning to anybody. Right. They didn't deserve that. So I think you're yeah. right, Brian. All right, let's go on to the next, see what we got coming up here. All right, and a little longer look down the hall here. And uh, next, uh, we went to ICE, uh, and we began to talk with Chris uh, again this year. There we are, chatting about a number of things. Uh, they are so high on these uh, new Ergolux seats that they uh, keep developing for each of the trikes. And now they have one for the Sprint X Tour. And uh, as I recall, Chris was telling me that, you know, they made it a little more sporty. You can see it, the, the one there, like fourth down with the red piping, and they have more channels in it because the Sprint X is a little sportier. So they want to have a little bit more uh, breathing room for your back and such. But very, review very comfortable. Of, re review of that seat up tomorrow morning on BetRiderOnline.com. There you go. And so Brian yeah, and I have both sat up. Yeah, his, yeah. His so, it, yeah, you'll, you'll hear what Brian has to say there. I can tell you that they're just even off off of a trike are very comfortable to sit on. They're great. So. I want one for my office chair. Yep, I know. It's <laughs> they're they're sensational. All right, Haza. Uh, the special thing with Haza this year is they're celebrating their twenty fifth uh, anniversary, uh, and so they had all kinds of special activities and things going on. You'll see in a little bit a uh, special show that they put on actually, um, and th they're known, of course, for their Delta trikes. And uh, they were showing those. There's a little bit of uh, me standing next to Kirsten. We had a nice interview, and we'll be talking all about what we saw there again on the uh, on the video that we'll have out. And uh, next, um, yeah, Bush and Mueller. Um, Oliver took this shot. Our friend Al Oliver Brand Mueller. Uh, no relation. And uh, I, I don't really uh, spend any time talking to those guys. Did you, uh, Brian? Do you have anything that you saw? No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't spend any time mirrors and lights. Uh, they're very yeah. held in very high regard. Uh, uh, Lars, I don't know. Did you have anything to say on that? Anybody? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, just to have you have a look at it. That was right there next to the ice booth. Next, yeah, and then we uh, we had talked to these guys a couple of years ago. And uh, and uh, now we had a chance to uh, see what the latest was. Next slide. This is um, this is Bomb Book, and uh, they uh, notably have a, a recumbent tandem, very robust kind of thing we talked about last time. And now, uh, besides uh, developing that, they have a quad, as you can see here, uh, and of course, e assisted, as you can see. Uh, and we talked a little bit about that. Uh, really uh, good, strong, um, robust looking uh, uh, bikes and trikes and quads there. So we will have that interview also on the video. And just look at that, those front differentials and stuff. Oh, my Lord. I know. Yeah, there you can go. You'll see yeah. those close up, too. There's a lot that goes into the, the quad. So, okay, next. And uh, there's Bike Revolution or Stein trikes with the wild ones there. Uh, always in subdued colors, uh, hardly say, noticeable. I was going to say, always the booth you don't notice is there. <laughs> right. So <laughs> there. You can hear. There. You. It's the only booth on the in Hollow One you can hear. <laughs> That's right. With your eyes closed, you can yeah. hear where the booth is. <laughs> Next one, please, Trey. And uh, yeah, uh, these are the kids' trikes. Uh, Lars, were you looking at that? 
Oh, no. Okay, I know you haven't. I, I was looking for these guys. I saw them in my in the the brochure, but I think they were always like out of the booth when I yeah. went by. Is that Velo Trikes? I think that's who. That I believe was. so. Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah, the, with some kid trikes, we didn't have a chance to talk to them, but we did see that. So okay, next. And uh, so I, I mentioned earlier about Haza and the 25th anniversary. So they put on this big production, and you'll see. Uh, You'll see it. I think uh, Brian uh, shot some video and pictures, and we got yeah. them. Uh, yeah. uh, Lars was all over it. So they had this box. You could hear a roaring inside, and you saw smoke coming out of it. They kept doing that until the show, and there's Lars. And uh, what came out of it was – next one, please, Dre. This bizarre uh, conveyance uh, with ha had little, like, uh, little tiny wheels on it, but it didn't roll. It kind of walked. And you'll you'll get to see that in the video. Kind of cool. And uh, this guy just put on a, a really good show for everybody. There's a huge crowd around it. It's now, if I deal. understand correctly, last year they had I – me I remember I, I think I put it in last year's article too. They, they did this like – it was the, the guy you saw with the top hat and some other people. It was like a performance art piece thing. And then Haza thought it was cool mm -hmm. and talked to them, and they did this thing together for their 25th. Very nice. Okay. So it, and it's a variation of what they already build, but with a lot of Haza parts on it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's so many articulating joints there. And that's a, that's a second, second device, obviously, for two people. And uh, I think that guy in front, the, the guy in the back is a Haza guy, but I think the guy in front may be just getting a ride. It was, it was just amazing to watch. I think that it's thing Larry around. David. It doesn't that look like that's exactly <laughs> what I thought. That guy looks like Larry David, but uh, I, I wish it was. I would have like to get an interview with him so da, 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 da. all right let me see here let me get a we, while you're looking at the velomobiles outside here let me look at the comments so oh, joe uh, lapata says great report is always good to see john on the show too i enjoy his videos i'll have to watch the rest later i'm off to cheer on the trailblazers okay well we've lost one to uh the trailblazers come back uh, joe yeah. <laughs> uh, room 360. We met room 360 at uh, Spetsy. Did not expect to see the report this early. This is actually room 360. This is just our review. It's not our video report, which is coming in uh, a week or so. And we may actually have two videos. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. All right. So, yeah, the uh, as usual, the uh, uh, the lawn area out in front of the Spetsy um, uh, uh, venue was covered with all kinds of things, including tons of Velomobiles. Uh, always fun just to walk through that and see them. Everybody just parks them there. And then now we're on to Hall 2. So um, what you're looking at right there in front of those three people is the Wolf and Wolf uh, uh, booth. And uh, Brian, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about, uh, about Wolf? You've talked about them in the past. I know how fond you are of them. Tell yeah, us what uh, you saw. There. It, this is kind of my grail bike. <laughs> Not necessarily this one with the ESS, but the Wolf and Wolves are just amazingly well built. I would call them kind of a, the, the designer admits he was influenced a lot by the Lightning P38, which I love the P38. It's kind of a low racer -y sort of P38. The handling is fantastic. Uh, it looks very racy, but it is really designed for touring, and they can take fat tires and all this stuff. Um, they're all custom built for the individual buyer. Uh, they are not cheap. Um, I want to say four thousand euros or something like that. They are. Uh, uh, don't quote me on that, but uh, they are not inexpensive at all. But yeah, the big news was they even have an ESS now. So I was really surprised to see that. Just knowing those guys, you know, over the last few years, I was really surprised that was a company that did ESS. And the initial idea for the Wolf and Wolf was more for touring, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So that's, it's, it's, a, it's a fast touring bike is what it was designed to Yeah, be. yeah. And so touring, I mean, I guess that's maybe the last frontier for e-assist, isn't it? I mean, not that people don't tour with e-assist, but it yeah. can be problematic. And I think In that... The range and all that stuff. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I think that's something that needs to be better solved. And uh, so the more people that get into it, I think the more likely it is we're going yeah. to... Uh, to see that done so okay let's go on to the next which is a zoob so yeah uh we had a chance to stop right next door to wolf and wolf and there's the big a zoob booth uh lots of interesting things there we got to see our friend hans gala again and talk about a couple of what uh, a couple of their uh trikes 
Uh, and, you know, of course, they're still a big maker of bikes, uh, recumbent bikes as well. So, um, yeah, next slide, Trey, you can see there's part of uh, us interviewing it. And I think um, that trike right there, if I'm not mistaken, Brian, you had a better even picture. Let's go to the next one. Did yeah. I put that next, maybe? Uh, you can talk about Yeah. Uh, is it CR? Yeah. The, they're all in on the triple 26, you know, tab hole trikes. I mean, they're going all in on that. And, it's great that somebody is. A lot of people do really like them. Um, I had the uh, TieFly X I, here uh, with the full E Assist and stuff. Uh, this has E Assist also. I, I know it doesn't. No, it's opinion. I'm sorry, but uh, that's a they make a more or less expensive version now that does not have the TieFly front suspension, which is cool. But uh, the unique thing they do is they put instead of just slapping some 26 inch rims on the standard hubs, they use Fat Trike single sided hubs on the front, which does make it a lot stiffer. You don't get that wheel flex and stuff like you might get if you just made the front wheels bigger. And they're definitely 100% all in on the triple 26s. And uh, I mean, they're obviously still going to make the 20s, but you know what I mean? They're really focusing on, you know, making more of these. And uh, yeah, and they do such super cool integration. Look at that. That's just the integration for the for the steps. That just looks so much better That's than beautiful, that, than that yeah. cheap plastic mount you normally get stuck to the handlebars. It's just, and and this also shows a bit of their color options. Basically, uh, you can get whatever the hell color you want on an Aza, pretty much. Uh, you can get as evidenced by that nice little there. pink bank behind. Yep. Yeah, pink bike behind it. Yeah, there. they'll they'll do just about anything you want, which is great. That's that's becoming a less and less and less of a thing. And uh, that's the uh, that's the owner, I think, that out in the left side of that picture. No, uh, I, don't, not, I, is, I thought he's no. I don't think he is. Okay. <laughs> I thought I, maybe I wrong. saw a video about this guy once and that looks like him. Anyways, uh, Hans is the only guy. Oh, yeah, it is. I couldn't, I couldn't see it very well on my screen. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think that's the right. guy. And I, I can't pronounce his name. I apologize for that. But he uh, seems like a really nice guy. So, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Schwabi really uh, didn't have much to say. We, uh, we, we talked to Carson again this year uh, briefly, but um, – he said, really, there's not much new that he can talk about at this point. I don't know. That was to us, Brian. I don't know if you got anything you could talk well, about. I mean, they're pushing that airless system. Mm -hmm. And and I guess that was there last year, but they weren't really pushing it as much as they are now. I know I got their big brochure thing, and that was like the main part of it. It was that, that new airless system that they really intend more for e-bikes. But um, it looks cool, you know, for an airless system, if you're into that. Uh, I'm not sure that's something that enthusiasts would probably really want on their bikes they're not as fast they, they usually usually get a pretty big hit in the rolling resistance department when you have airless tires but uh you know like a foam insert thing to replace your uh, your tube mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right let's roll on to the next one all right well always an interesting booth uh this is trike explore the uh the chinese manufacturer uh that uh was known last year for the uh, folding trike uh, that they put together. You can still see it in this picture here. And they talked about it a bit. Yeah, thank you, Trey. They talked about it a bit this year, but they also were kind of emphasizing some other things. Uh, let's go on to the next. I think I've got a few pictures here we can talk about. So, yeah. So they have the regular uh, trike system that they sell, and uh, they still sell a quad and... Um, then the, of course, e-assist uh, with the uh, fat tires. So they're really, they're building out their line as far as I can tell. Uh, and there's that folding trike that is the smallest folding trike uh, that we can see. So they've developed that further um, uh, than they had last year. I can tell you that our, um, our friend um, uh, Doug Davis uh, was in, um, where was it, Shanghai, I think, where they had the Shanghai Bike Show. Uh, and I've been corresponding with him, and he saw a number of interesting things there. I think maybe we'll have him on next month to talk about some some of the things he saw. He saw the Trike Explorer there and tried out a number of things where you had a little bit more chance to see uh, in depth what 
uh, they're building. And uh, so he'll have something to say about that. But uh, yeah, the only other thing I'll say about Track Explorer is that uh, the one difficulty we had with them last year was in language. They weren't terribly strong in English. Uh, this year they hired, uh, uh, to, their bent, to their credit, hired a German uh, marketing company and they had a, a German guy talk to me about uh, the trikes and knew a lot about what was going on and his English was very good. So uh, I think less mistakes, they were worried about making mistakes in terms of what they were telling people. So uh, yeah, that I thought, well, well, you'll see that again, interview, uh, you'll see it on the, on the video, kind of interesting stuff from Trike Explorer. All right, and uh, we move along. There's my lovely wife, Marilyn, who handled uh, the camcorder uh, on uh, one of our cameras. And then, of course, Lars handled uh, his as well. So we have, uh, we'll have shots from all kinds of angles. on the And a big fan there. in the background there, apparently. Uh, or, or, yeah. she's, or she's hailing a cab. I can't tell. It, it could be, yeah. Or maybe it was just hot in there. I'm not sure. <laughs> all right, next... Uh, there we go. Oh yeah, and that was at Trike Explorer. We just thought that was amazing. The little um, little model that they put together, kind of cool. Oh, and by the way, you need you need to say <clears throat> that this uh, Trike model was fully functional. That was amazing. They yeah, had, back up they a had second. To, yeah, uh, suspension, the steering was working, everything was working. It was really great. Uh, Lars it. actually tried to sit in this, and he found it to fit just about the same as the arrow did. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was remarkable. So, just kidding. That's he didn't do that. Either. All right. Yeah. And so uh, there we are. This is um, this is a, a booth that was. We go to the next one, Trey. I just kind of want to show everybody that had an interesting new product, and Brian uh, was there. I found out as well. Those things in that guy's hands, they look like uh, paddles for. Uh, cardiac resuscitation, but in fact, those are magnets, and they had uh, these are magnetic pedals and straps that you wear on your shoes to keep you instead of clipping in, uh, you're kind of uh, magnetized in. I, I guess. So, I thought those ahead, were just a, those are just they're just a great idea for a more casual kind of rider. I've always maintained that if you're going to have a tadpole, you need to have some kind of foot retention. Mm -hmm. I've always felt that way. Would be back when I worked in retail, even if because if your foot hits the ground at speed, it's bad news. And these are just, especially if you're just a casual rider, someone with uh, a disability or something, it's just an easy way to lock on. You just strap one side on your pedals, one side on your feet, and they just magnet lock on, and they hold your feet on plenty well enough. I mean, I don't think performance riders would like them very much, but I think for a more casual rider, they're just a great idea. And very I think, clever, yeah. And I think they're like 80 euros or something like that. They weren't horrible. They weren't horrible. Expensive. Oh, and so you can see the name there. Sp Sport Hopio, I think is. Yeah. And I'm probably mispronouncing that. I tried. They're a French company. Yeah. So I think we have one more shot of the guy riding maybe the tray. Do we have the next shot there? And then I'm going to. Nope. Okay. Well, hold right there on the TerraCycle booth. Let me go back to the comments. We have a few things here. Um Oh, okay. So thanks, Larry. Uh, yes, I, I was mentioning with Brian about who owns uh, uh, Azub, and he says, yes, that's Alice it is Zemanic. Uh, uh, Alice, Alice yeah. Zemanic. Yeah. yeah, he's but the my, owner of Azub. My feed went very blurry for a second there, and I couldn't see who it was. But yeah, that's Alice, yeah. Okay. And Julie uh, Love Grove says, um, we test drove the Wolf and Wolf at Betsy, and it felt so nice and very fast. And Julie and Mark uh, Lovegrove do a lot of touring, so uh, you know I think I think if anything that bike might be made for them. So oh, they're they're amazing. Yeah. Yep. All right, and uh, let's see anything else here. Oh, um, and Joseph uh, Janning here. In my view, the most interesting trend this year with uh, with the many monster trikes. A couple of, oops, kind of scrolled up there. Uh, a couple of companies were showing, like SUVs in the three-wheel bike world. And that's an interesting view. But yes, a lot of monster trikes as well. And uh, Tim's trike trips, great idea for us with disabilities. Uh, oh, might get me some magnets. Uh, he was talking about the oh, yeah. uh, magnet yeah, pedals. So. Uh, I've, I've already been in contact with them. I'm, I'm going to have those in the review on the site too. So Because I think Very they're, nice. they're a fantastic idea for, for a, a large segment of the market. Good. Okay. And uh, just to say hi, Claudio Lucio and Stuart Moore, former uh, guest on the show from Berlin. Hi, Stuart. All right. So next we went to uh, TerraCycle. You saw the booth being built first on the outside plaza. And uh, you can look right there in the very back 
see that funny looking hat? That's Pat Franz right back there. And he was, that booth was swamped every time we went by. Everybody's interested. Now, interestingly, you can go to the next shot if you would, uh, Trey, uh, Pat uh, hadn't been to uh, hadn't been to Spetsy, I guess, for a couple of years, and they have a company they work with in Europe uh, called Icleta that um, that uh, markets their products. So when uh, when TerraCycle is not there, Icleta has in their booths uh, show the TerraCycle things. But this year, Pat actually showed up with the crew and uh, was there to show off uh, the stuff himself. So yeah, I did a little interview there. Still talking about a number of interesting de uh, devices that he's put together, including the new fairing mount. And Brian, this was uh, this was that uh, yeah, lever addition. Go ahead, tell me I, about I, that. I think that's just super cool. It's, it's it. This is what TerraCycle does so well is just making something super simple that you wonder why nobody else made it before. So this is just a little nubbin to put on the end of your bar and shifter. Works with micro shifts, RAM, or Shimano. And it's just another little place to mount something. And it's it's just a perfect place to, I thought, to mount like a bell because your thumb's right there anyway. You know, a little thumb bell, uh, maybe a small light, something like that. I just thought that was a super cool idea. Yep. And it looks beautiful. It's a nubbin. Yeah. It's an yeah. oven. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. I hope that's what it's called. <laughs> uh, um, it might be if it if it should be. The so shifter we'll oven. <laughs> shifter oven. Next one, please, Trey. All right. So uh, for the second year, last year they was their inaugural. They have this inventor's tent that uh, our our buddy uh, Hardy Zebeck. You see him on the left there, the owner of Spetsy. Uh, he put together this inventor's tech concept. And uh, they uh, they vet and then uh, invite, um, I think, maybe 10 uh, inventors to show off um, their wares uh, and to be showcased at Spetsy. And so that's a place that you will find really interesting things. And uh, geez, I'm not sure what that, that is a dynamo of some sort, I think. Um, and I'm not sure what no, that this is. Got. Go ahead, Lars. This, this is... Um, this is um e-bike system so the motors are very very small and drive the, the ah. rim directly so okay. um uh i can't remember all the details but uh oliver took this photo oliver did that's right no wonder i didn't know so thank you oliver okay. for getting that okay and this is one of my very favorite things at the show and it's a solar solar full uh po solar tilting trike yeah that's what i'm trying to say and uh the gentleman is uh italian and he lives in france you're going to see a picture of him in a minute but stay with this if you would so uh it's hard to see from this because it's almost at your eye level but that's a big solar panel at the top and the trike tilts and of course as is if you're if you're tooling along on that thing and the uh for a couple hours the sun's going to move uh, maybe overhead or whatever you can just grab that thing and it and it rotates so you can follow the sun in that direction and you can see the it's a narrow trike you can see the back there and he has a whole all kinds of interesting uh an interesting mechanism i should say uh for the way that thing tilts and he's got it all shown uh, on the the uh, plaque the the boards there on your left and he was happy to talk to everybody about it next slide you'll see uh you see him there and he uh, really interesting guy um i thought that was one of the more interesting things that i saw they're always tilting trikes fascinate me uh, and I know they're complicated, so, uh, but that was that. Okay, next one. Uh, a couple things. Um, quickly, in the background, it's hard to see. That's an upright bike, but you'll see uh, two orangey red looking things. Those are pontoons. There's There were four of them, uh, two for the back wheel, two for the front. Yep, thanks, Trey. Uh, we couldn't quite figure out how that was supposed to work. Didn't seem like that bike would stay upright if it went into the water. So uh, I'm not sure what that was about, but it was kind of interesting to see. Pedal really fast. Yeah, you'd have to. Uh, it seems like you'd be pedaling upside down if that water was very high, but uh, it was an interesting concept. I don't know. And then in, in the foreground, uh, we have a second picture. That's great. Thanks, Trey. So this was a really interesting French uh, Frenchman who put this together. And it's uh, this thing um, can be transformed into all kinds of different uh, uh, confirmations. It's a... Um, so it's a, a tandem. You could put a baby or a small adult in the front there in this configuration. It could put a platform where that seat is, you see right there. He made like a cargo bike out of it. 
And you can see how it's um, the frame on the top there is kind of a rail. So you could slide things forward and back and adjust it. Uh, you can see the steering's kind of interesting on it. So uh, really kind of a uh, kind of a fun bike. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's the guy that won. Next one. And uh, Brian, I think you're going to have something to say about this. Uh, so I saw this at the uh, inventor's tent, and I noticed he also had a booth. Uh, yeah. Ditch, Ditchker or Ditchka, I think is the I think name of the I think, it's Di I think it's Diker. Okay. I'm All not right. positive, but I, we've got Mark, a few slides, so Trey, go ahead and slowly go through them. And, and, and Brian, tell me what so you know that's, about. So that's oh. Dutch. I wouldn't know, but I also think it's Diker. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, just, I just love that flat platform. I just thought, you know, it was very uh, car-like, as is the steering wheel. I wasn't so super fond of that. But uh, also very, uh, very well-developed suspension system. Uh, very limited gear range on this particular version. Uh, th they're working on that to put some more uh, wider gear range and stuff in it. But uh, it's just, I just like that modular sort of platform. This is kind of just the first one they have. But it's just a flat floor. You can put whatever you want on it. And I just, I just thought it was a really cool design, and it rode, it rode pretty well too. I only got to ride it like very slow speeds around the area, and it's got a face. Wow, you got did you did so, you get to ride it, Brian? I did, yeah. Wow, I asked awesome. really. I got in there early. Um, I won't say how I got in early. I was given the wrong badge. <laughs> like I, oh, yeah, get, I remember that. <laughs> they gave me an house teller badge, and I, and said I could come back and get my press badge, and I was like, nope, this one works fine. Yeah, so, I, uh, I, I, I did tried that. to get a, a test ride, but it wasn't possible. So. Yeah, I, I got in really early. I just very Brian, tell us about the about propelling that. It's like a push pull pe uh, pedal thing, right? How yeah, that, it's, what's it's, that it's, like? It's a bit, it's a bit odd, but it it you know it takes a couple seconds to get used to. Again, I didn't get taken like on the proper roads or anything, but um, yeah, it, it worked pretty well. Okay, let me jump in here for a second. Back to the uh, to the uh, floating uh, upright. So, room uh, three hundred and sixty. Thank you. Uh, it says it's a very bike uh, with a boy with buoyancy bodies. Impulse comes from the rotating wheel. So, I guess that's it. it propel, propels itself in the water yeah. that way. Okay, yeah, I guess. interesting. Uh, and then uh, Heis Viet says, "What is the weight of the?" Uh, Ditchker with fairing. Thank you. Uh, I that right. I I don't I I think I I'll have that when I do my coverage, but I haven't gotten to them yet. But no, I I think it I don't I have no idea. But uh, I didn't remember it off the top of my head. Okay. But yeah, it's got a little face. <laughs> it's cute. All right, next one. Yeah. I think there's one more, <laughs> maybe of the booth. The next one after that, please, so Trey. Yeah, there's so so. Were they? I guess my question then is: Were were they the part of the inventor's tent? They were inside it, but they had their own booth, right? So yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. I never made it to the inventor's tent. So yeah. by, by okay. the time I walked over there, everything was all wrapped up. So yeah, it wasn't there for long. Only to, to Saturday, like five. So yeah, yeah. All right, next one, uh, Brian. Tell us. I mean, we. I was looking for that Messer Schmidt. I don't even know where that was. It's kind of interesting. Tell us about that. It was out. It was outside in that the outside hall. I, I just. I've always just been enamored with them. I've never really gotten that much information out of them, but uh, I, I just think it's really cool. Like especially the interior. Like this is definitely the most finished version of it I've seen. It's always. It's been there the last couple three years, but uh, this is definitely the most complete version. This blue and I took pictures of. If you go to the next slide, I think there's one of the inside. Mm -hmm. and yeah i mean just look at that that's just cool i mean it's just a, it looks like a car and it's and obviously they're meant to be electric assisted um this new version with the small wheels the i think they're like uh 16 inch front wheels or maybe even 12s very small little front wheels but i just always like just for something to bop around town in i just think that's it they're just really really cool yep and they look like the old Messer Schmidt cars. All right. And let's hold off on the mo for just a second. Uh, Joseph Janning, it's a linear drive. You push the pedals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, like yeah that I, couldn't think, I couldn't think of the word either. But yeah, and, it, it seemed yeah. to work. And Zorro in Hell says, so Brian, when will you have the review on the Wolf and Wolf bikes? When, whenever I buy one. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's a lot of these small manufacturers. It's easy to say, oh, when are they going to send you one to review? Well, a lot of them are making stuff as fast as they can possibly make it. So uh, getting more press just kind of compounds their problems, uh -huh. you know? So yep. um, 
yep. until you're ready to really take that next step. I don't blame him for not wanting. Super nice guys, good relationship with them. But uh, whenever I buy yep. one, is when I and they're I Swiss. I don't know if we mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, Swiss, actually. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, now we had a look at the Mo uh, last year, and w- really didn't have a chance to come back and talk to that guy this year. What, uh, Brian? This was from you. What else did you find out? So I had to stop back by this because uh, my wife and I looked. My wife was with me last year, and we looked at it, and she was enamored with this thing and wanted to almost like buy one on the spot. Um, uh, but I don't know if they'd work in uh, Rochester, New York City streets. But a uh, super cool side by side sociable kind of velmobile but not really this is really more of a pedal assisted electric vehicle but they are really cool really well made as you can see the body i think you can see it pretty well if you look around the edges here the body is all you know like uh i don't want to call it particle board because it's nicer than like, that uh, but it, it, it's uh, like ply yeah it's like a fancy plywood yeah. and it basically comes flat pack like something for my frame everything does right he and talked about build, that last you year, how he up. could ship it easily. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I did ask him, they've, uh, they're in production now. He's sold 13 of them in the last couple months. So, uh, nice. yeah, they are fully production and available now, made in Spain. And uh, you see it's uh, got a solar charger up there. So the idea is you ride it to work. If it's remotely sunny outside, yeah. you leave it out and it'll charge up enough for your ride home while you're at work. I think Very it was nice. quite uh, the price was around four thousand and something, if I remember rightly. Very yeah, reasonable. Was the price yeah, it was very, it very was. reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it I mean some some assembly required. Yeah, <laughs> but it's uh, it's pretty. Cool. All right, Brian. This is also a trailer that you saw. Tell us a little about this. Yeah, this is a company called Burkholz, and uh, this is a solar. It's it's not a. I thought initially it was probably a all in one e assist trailer type of thing but it isn't it's just meant to be a regular cargo trailer with some very efficient solar panels that will help you boost your the length of the the battery on your main trike and they've put a lot of work into making sure that it integrates well with uh, most uh e-assist systems uh they, they said there's a couple they have a, a few issues with but like i know the steps and stuff like that which is very popular it works very well with so it lets you just charge your batteries as you're riding, or at least you know help help maintain. I don't think it's going to charge as quickly as you're draining them, but it'll help extend your range, and also you get some room for some storage. Are there two wheels, or is that one wheel? There are two. Okay. Yeah, and there's two different sizes. There's this one, and then you can see the blue one up by the guy's feet is much larger. Mm-hmm. Or they just make plain old cargo trailers too, if you just want that uh that box. All right. Thank you. Next one. All right, so yeah, um, Saturday night, uh, we were invited, uh, Brian included, uh, to a wonderful, uh, well, what was it, a, a bar, restaurant uh, kind of uh, place, and uh, by Ice and Icleta, who, uh, go ahead, the next shot, you'll see there were a bunch of us there, and we had a chance to, Brian's down there, you, you might just barely see Patrick uh from yeah. ice there down on the left side towards the end. And Brian, you're hidden somewhere, but you were down yeah. there too. And uh, Pat Franz was there and it was wonderful. We had a chance to talk. I was sitting right there next to Pat and we t- had a chance to talk to, uh, to Chris uh, from ice the whole time. And um, it was wonderful. Nice, uh, nice uh, chance to get to know everybody a little bit better and kind of relax after the first day of Spetsy. So Brian, uh, did you learn anything interesting at the dinner? No, uh, Patrick from Ice and Raina from Terra Trek and I were mostly just making juvenile jokes the whole night. So, right, I didn't learn anything. No, and uh, yeah, and uh, it was all more <laughs> sober and serious down at our end. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not really, but uh, I was at the fun end of the table. Yep, yep, we heard you guys. It was fun. All right, next one. So, and then uh, I think this is the start of Sunday morning, and uh, we went out for breakfast and. Uh, you can see during uh, Spetsy weekend all over town, uh, the Velomobiles, especially all the recumbents, but especially the Velomobiles are widely seen. So, all right. Well, we uh, had a chance to stop and see uh, the major sponsors again this year for our Spetsy video, Trident Trikes. And uh, we had a chance to, f- to film the opening scene, which we had a lot of fun with. Uh, next, uh, I think we ta- we have some more shots of them. So uh, a couple of things of note at Trident uh, that we noticed. First of all, you c- you can see the canopy there. They've made some um, 
updates on the canopy, canopy since uh, CycleCon and uh, makes it easier to ship and, and such. It's very inexpensive, a nice little addition there that you can use. The other really interesting thing is um, that uh, Yauta, um, you can see Rudy there from Yauta, uh, besides the Yauta trikes and Trident that he sells in Europe, he has now taken on Greenspeed. So he is now the distributor for Greenspeed trikes in Europe. So uh, for the first time, you uh, not for the first time ever, ever because I think, I think Ian has been to Spetsy many years ago, but for the first time in a long time, uh, you could uh, actually test out uh, and now buy uh, green speed trikes in Europe. So uh, that was uh, an interesting development there. And of course, the FNEO, uh, the front uh, FNEO uh, gear there and the arrow. That's okay. Yeah, we can go back to the arrow that we talked about a little early, earlier um, was on display. And I think uh, a lot of people tried that out. And go to the next one, if you would. The the arrow was very popular with the uh, the racier types, I think. So yeah, no doubt. Uh, a, yeah. Lot the, uh, a lot of the a lot of the because you know HPV racing is pretty popular over there. So a lot of yes. those guys were checking it out. Yeah, uh, and when we were at the worlds, I don't think we saw it. one arrow there. Uh, would have been interesting uh, last year to see how uh, an arrow would have uh, would have held up against some of the other competitions. So maybe that will happen now. We'll see. But yeah, there's a just kind of a what it looks like when you're wandering in and out of the outdoor venue, uh, people in the street riding just about everything you can imagine uh, there. Next, yeah, look look both ways when you cross the street there. <laughs> you got to look both ways when you're going to the to the next uh, to the next alleyway there. So yeah. <laughs> And this is uh, Lars from Velox, uh, their second year there. Uh, you can go to the next slide and you'll see uh, this is the trike that uh, is really, really strongly built and has this huge battery. So they claim a very large range on this thing. And it's fairly, he develops it uh, more. He's an engineer himself, develops, develops it a little mo more each year. So he had a lot to tell us. And we interviewed uh, Lars again this year. Next one, please. And uh, well, this was a, a, a kind of a wooden built side-by-side uh, -side sociable recumbent car of some sort. Uh, I think I think Oliver also took this picture with a very interesting hood ornament you can see in the upper left there yeah, too. I, ne you guys I never, know about caught, that? I yeah, never caught it when it wasn't moving. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I got to ride that actually. It was, it oh, was did great. you? Yeah. What did you think, John? It was great. Um, the steering, uh, the braking system was quite interesting. You actually pull the steering wheel towards you to apply the brakes. So wow. that took oh, that took some getting used to. Yeah. <laughs> but it was uh, it was pretty fast. I mean, I whizzed around the 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 lap there around the velomobiles with my son in the passenger seat, and uh, the pedals on uh, the passenger side weren't engaged. So it was just my side working, and we were flying around. It's in the video actually, which will will post eventually very good but, um yeah really good a guy called uh, kai kai made it it's like an homage to the old uh velo, to the, the, old to the velo, velo car. cars yeah, yeah, yeah. By charles moshe yeah that, that was the inspiration yeah all yeah. right we've got another uh, message another comment here from room uh, 360 uh referring to the uh, trailer the solar trailer i think that brian you were talking about it says outside there was another booth with lightweight trailers that would be a much cheaper base to build a solar trailer. So I don't know what that other one weighed, but that's interesting mm -hmm. enough. Um, and Room360 says, Brian, what a shame I did not see you, Edge Betsy. So and no, yeah, maybe I was walking time. around. Yeah, if you ever see me, come up and say hi. I, I never mind that. And Kit and Teddy, yeah, the car is from Kai in Germany. He is working for Volomo and also built my green Mamba. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, right, so back to the pictures. Uh, another uh, street shot here. See all the people walking and velomobiles and the taxis, the uh, velo taxis. You can see in front of that orange velomobile. There's a little. They have those velo taxis running around everywhere. You, yep, mm -hmm. and they take you from one venue to the next. A lot of fun. Next, and uh, just kind of how, showing you how busy it is. The EC velo there. Which, as I recall, it's a trike inside there with a shell, right? It's an, it's an Azub, yeah. An Azub, yep, yep. Okay, next. All right, and uh, so there are two major test tracks at Spetsy. One is just the regular 
uh, a bike test track and you can try out just about everything. And then they have a separate uh, track for e-assisted uh, vehicles. And uh, we were lucky enough to get out there to the ice uh, tent and Patrick got us set up with a couple of e-assists and uh, um, sprints and adventures. There's uh, Lars on that. And we went around the track. This is just a gorgeous looking track and uh, it's set in the grounds of an old fort. And you'll it, see a couple it, of pictures. That, that track is so much fun. Yeah. It was one and of it, my highlights. It was yep, it wasn't it, it, guys? Yeah. I mean, you go up hills and around and it's just beautiful. Uh, next picture, you'll I, see a couple I could destroy some tires on that thing like yeah. nobody's business. I, I could burn I, I, through I a set of fronts and 50 miles on that thing, I bet. <laughs> John, what did, you, what did you have a chance to ride there? Um, I rode the Adventure. I think it had an e-assist on it, which was yeah. uh, really interesting. And um, yeah, the track just begs for you to go quicker and quicker, which is not advised, really. I did no. get a, a couple <laughs> of warnings. That there's the that marshal. downhill right at the turn at the end it was a pretty 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 tight turn yeah. you gotta you don't want to be going too fast around there you did can you, see did Patrick. you get did you get told to slow down too john uh, yeah twice yeah he, okay i'm glad i'm not yeah, the he only said, one. you're on your you're on your second and final warning then the third time i went round, i put my hand in front of my face like that as i went past him so he didn't recognize me Right. He, he, he just uh, he just chuckled away, so it's all okay. Well, we had the big cameras, so I think maybe they were a little reticent to say too much to us. But yeah, we were flying around there too. There's Patrick holding the cam. We were swapping the cameras, and oh, awesome. I think we have some good shots to show you from the videos when we do that. But uh, yeah, we all agree, just a fantastic place to uh, yeah. to ride. And there we are walking down the street, looking for the next uh, next clip and the next. <clears throat> and then we had the opportunity to um, stop in CTO at uh, velmobile.nl. Lots of stuff going on there. In his hand is um, is uh, a model of uh, the Quest 3.0. Is that right, John? Isn't that what they call that? Yes, that's the 3.0. I'm going to let John look. tell you all about this guy. So, uh, yeah, this is the next version of the Quest a lot of changes. John, go ahead. Tell yeah. us what you know. Yeah, about it's, a, it's a beautiful looking machine. It's funny because when I first uh, rocked up at their stand, um, I was looking around this uh, model and I thought, oh, it's a, it's, it's a model of the Quattro Velo. It looks slightly different and the back end is not right. And uh, so I, I, at first I assumed it was the Quattro Velo, the first one they made or something and then sort of redesigned a few things. And then uh, once I started speaking to Alec, yeah, I realized that it was the new Quest, and it's quite exciting. So it has the same sort of uh, uh, opening as the Milan on the top, which is quite nice. And uh, I do like the front. You know, it's not as harsh as the Quattrovello. It's a bit more subtle. And the uh, the sides are really nice as well, and it should it should hopefully handle better in side winds. John, could you tell? Well, that's that. That's kind of getting into what I was going to ask you. Tell us. You know, it's been a while since the Quest came out, and uh, in oh, some God. sense, from people I've talked to, uh, Velomobile development has kind of passed it by. I guess that's the impetus for doing this. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what sorts of things the and you have a Quest? What sort? What sort of things have been passed by? What's changed uh, in the in in Vel Velomobile building that uh, that the Quest is not up to today? That needs to be changed. Yeah, I think nowadays everything's a lot stiffer uh, transmission-wise. Um, the Carbon Quest tried to rectify that uh, over the standard Quest. And they tried to make this, uh, the transmission, the rear axle out of carbon. And uh, just Velomobiles are getting a lot lighter now as well. You know, I think the Carbon Quest weighs around 28 kilograms now. And uh, and then you're going into, you know, DF, which is about, depending what spec, around 23, 24 kilograms. And then you've got the Alpha 7 now, which is about 20 to 21 kilograms, depending how you spec it. So, yeah, they're getting lighter and lighter. And uh, I wouldn't say more aero, but, um, I mean, the Milan's really good inside winds. The DF's not as good as the Milan. Uh, what so about the you, Quest inside winds? Because that's a the side stability in winds is is the thing they yeah, talk about a lot. Yeah, I think the Quest uh, is susceptible uh, to side winds. You can get the storm strip, which goes on the uh, on the bonnet there, down the middle. Um, that's a sort of aftermarket thing you can buy, which does help a lot with side winds. But um, I mean, the Quest, you've just got to be aware. You know, if it's a gusty day, don't exceed you know thirty kilometers an hour. Um, and uh, 
be be prepared to steer into the wind, otherwise you'll be uh, switching lanes. I mean, <laughs> without even trying. Yeah, the video we did the other day, and uh, when yeah. we went down to Margate to ride with some friends, it was fifty mile an hour winds there, and I came wow. down down one hill, and uh, the bike was like all over the place, and I was like trying to keep it on the road. So, um, yeah, it, that sounds it, scary. It, it, it's interesting. And back to the slides, if you would, Trey. Back up one. I, so one more thing I just wanted to say about the new Quest. That looks remarkably close to the color you have on your current Quest. Am I wrong? Yes. it's. it's I'd, I'd say it's slightly lighter. Um, I've got the Volkswagen Sirocco uh, metallic blue on, okay. on the Quest. Um, doesn't look as uh, shiny as that one now. <laughs> right. Well, it's been down the road a couple of miles. So Yeah. Okay. Next one, Trey. All right, so uh, I'll just kind of talk about this for a second. I'm going to send it back to you, John. So uh, this is Jan, who is in charge of the new factory uh, in Romania. And his enterprise is called Velomobil.ro for Romania. And he, uh, this factory uh, builds Velomobiles for many of the other manufacturers. And he also manufactures himself now. So um that uh, that velomobile right in front of us is uh the alpha 7 and uh again i'm going to go back to john and uh, john if you can fill in a little bit of the details about uh, velomobile ro and uh, and about the alpha 7 and your uh, your adventures with it at spetsy yeah um i met jan for the first time at spetsy um yeah really nice chap and uh, they're making pretty much all of the bikes there for Velomobil NL, the Quattro is made uh, in Romania. Uh, the Quests are made in Romania, I think Strada. Um, this is the bike, one of the bikes I rode at Spetsy for the first time, and uh, it, it didn't disappoint. I thought the ride was going to be a lot harsher than it was, and it uses elastomers all round on the suspension. And uh, it was uh, the, a very comfortable ride. Oh, that was one of the big surprises. That's, that's what I thought, too, when I rode it. It was, I was surprised at how smooth it was. I yeah, just expected yeah. it to be a lot racier. They only let me ride it, I think, because I was standing next to you. Yeah. <laughs> and they thought that I, was, uh, that I knew what I was doing. So they let me on it. But, uh, a yeah. very good point to uh, uh, to stop and, and talk about John the celebrity because, <laughs> yeah, wherever, whenever we did run into John, he, he seemed to be mobbed by, uh, by fans. And, uh, you know, and, and I know he loves the folks that watch his videos and all. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but he also was pretty much doing all the, the shooting of video himself. So I know he was kind of busy. Yeah. So he yeah. deftly handled that, I thought. And uh, yeah. that's why it was he great. It was, yeah, it was great meeting all the fans. Uh, I didn't know there were so many, actually. But, um, yeah, it was really it was really fun. Good event uh, to bring your son to. Yeah. Now, he now, loved it. now your son thinks dad's cool. Yeah, he said that. I didn't know you were so famous. I said, nor did I. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised <laughs> both of you. But yeah, right. yeah. Going back to the alpha. Yeah, um, please. Yeah, set back to the. If we go back to the pictures, and I want to hear more about it. Uh, back one, please. Uh, back a couple. Oh, okay. Keep there. You go. Yeah, That's it's good. um, yeah, it's something else. Uh, I mean, I've ridden a lot of Velomobiles, but um, it was a it was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, the acceleration. Um, uh, you can feel yeah. the lightness in the bike itself. It doesn't take much to get it really going. So yeah, I know for, you really were not rocket the, ship. Yeah, you were yeah. probably weren't on the track or anything. But did you get a sense for the actual speed and yeah. acceleration? Or what do you think? Yeah, it, it's it's definitely on a par with the DF. I I I reckon maybe a bit quicker, but I'd need to to take it out for a few hours. But I've got some good news on that as well, an exclusive. Mm -hmm. um uh, uh, bill are giving me one for a long-term review so i'm taking well i'm going to pick it up this week actually and bring it back to london and i'll finish using it for the time trial so that'll be a good test of what this bike can do uh, so i've got the time trial starting up at the olympic park this tuesday which i'm going to do in the quest and then next tuesday it will be the alpha sevens turn i hope i don't crash it um well, yeah. what a great opportunity to, to make that comparison and to yeah. get the alpha seven yeah wow for, john that's great yeah, for four and, and a half months so we've got a long time to to really test it and do lots of tours and stuff so it's cool it seemed to me that i fit in it, my particular body build i fit in it better than i do in the df like the mm -hmm. DF fits okay, but that just seemed like comfortable and roomy to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was going to be super tight, but it's not. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, 
you know, because it looks narrower at the sides, but um, yeah, it's great. And the the white one I rode, the seat wasn't attached properly, um, so that yeah. was rattling around a bit. Yeah, me, but, me, me too. But yeah, yeah, it was, it was still, it was very impressive. It was, yeah. it was stomp on the pedals, and it was a rocket ship. It didn't feel mm-hmm. like a velomobile. It just felt like a trike. Yeah. All right, John. Yeah. Speaking of your fans, Tim's uh, trike trip says, "What time is John at the Olympic Park on Tuesday, please?" Oh yes, I'm there at. It starts at seven and i think i'm on the track at eight or ten past eight something like that right. there's a hunt there's a hundred guys turn up so they, well they they only allow a hundred it's so popular um so yeah and they allow recumbents velomobiles and you can win a trophy if you're the fastest uh, hpv so yeah get down there guys yeah it's, it's tim awesome. says i'll go and cheer him along so you'll Yay. have you'll awesome. have your fans there for you that'll be great well well i look forward to uh to seeing uh, the video from all of that, John. That's awesome. So, all right. Anything more on the Office 7? I don't want to leave that before we're done. Uh, no? no, yeah, that's about all it. All right. Yeah. Now, a little bit of a sad story, and I'll let you guys fill in what you know. I um, uh, The day, I think, or two days after uh, Sp- Spitzy, uh, we all got notice of a, uh, of a theft of the – uh, prototype for the next uh, the next velomobile that comes from the Alpha Seven, I think uh, called the After Seven, um, and um, it was stolen from Spetsy from outside. I think they were parked in yeah uh, outside a bar. Apparently. Yeah, go ahead, John. You know more about it than I do, anyways. Tell tell us uh, if you would what you know about this. Yeah, I saw, I saw online that um, they went out. I think it was Sunday night after Spetsy had finished. And were having a tipple or two, and what I read was that the bike, the bar was on the right-hand side of the road, and the bike was left across the road on the other side, and uh, they were drinking away and didn't realize someone picked it up and walked off with it. So um, apparently, it wasn't locked up. That's what I read. So yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it's such a shame. I mean, it's the it's taken I think Daniel a year to make this machine. And it's the only one, and you know, he's, he's, he's trying everything on it, and then the, the production models will start. So he's going to have to do that all again if he does it. I hope so, because you know, it's a phenomenal piece of kit, and I think it weighs something ridiculous like 16 kilograms. If I'm not 100% sure on the exact weight, but I picked it up when it was inside Spetsy, which is the safest place for it to be inside the show because you've got the security right. uh, people on every entrance or exit, so you can't take anything out. And um, then it was unattended, but um, there was always a huge crowd around the machine, so I could never get near it to film it. There was always like 30 or 40 people around it looking inside and whatnot. And then uh, it started to rain big style, and uh, I went out in the rain, and there was nobody around the bike. So I got to film it, lifted it up to feel how heavy. I mean, it weighed as much as my Brompton bag with a few bits, <laughs> a few bits yeah. in it. <laughs> I lifted it up with one hand, like, blim it out. I couldn't believe so, it. Uh, so was it Daniel that actually uh, rode it to the to the – to outside when it got stolen or was someone else riding? You don't oh, know. Yeah. Daniel. Daniel was was thought, yeah. And so this is the next stage in the, the development of, uh, of the alpha seven, right? Would be the, he may not, he may name it something else, but so this is the next stage after the alpha seven. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I think there's going to be, well, once the alpha sevens, uh, I think in July, the first alpha will be delivered. First order will be uh, completed. So um, I'll ride the, the one I'm getting and um, any issues with it, I'll let them know and maybe they can sort that out before the first one goes out. Um, so, yeah, they're going to have, you know, the Alpha 7, the After 7. There's an, another one as well, which was the After 8 or something like that. And they're all different weights. Different. Uh, there's a, a few hand, hand-built hand jobbies, which I think was going to be the After 7, as far as I can remember, the one that yeah. was stolen. And they were uh, started at about fifteen thousand euros, I think. So very yeah. expensive. But all paying. creations from the mind of Daniel Fenn, uh, who yeah. is known for being uh, one of the more creative uh, velo designers in the world. So mm-hmm. we hope. Uh, I know you do, and everyone else that's watching hope that uh, that they find uh, this yeah, automobile somewhere. So that's what it looks like, guys. If you happen to see that rolling mm-hmm. around somewhere. Uh, contact the people, I guess, at Spetsy or um, or maybe at uh, velomobile.ro. 
Uh, yeah, and, there, uh, there is a reward of a thousand euros for any information I think, leading so. to, to Let, getting it back. Let's hope that uh, that gets found and, and sent back uh, to yeah. Danny So, all right, uh, thanks, guys. Okay, what else? What do we got? Uh, okay, keeping on with the Velomobile uh, theme here, we had a chance to stop and talk to our friend Stefan from Katanga and the Wow Velomobile. Um, now, uh, that guy you see that looks like Lars is pointing the camera at, I'm not sure who, what he that's, is, but that's Giovanni. The, the big guy there is Giovanni Iapani. Yeah. Uh, just the most jovial, nicest guy Very in fantastic. what he's an Italian. And he, uh, he's big into, uh, working on uh, Velomobile design himself. He has uh, a recumbent bike shop in Italy, right? Uh, just mm -hmm. a great guy. I met him um, at the at the World Championships last year, and it was great to see him again. Uh, uh, is he working on something specific you know about, John? I don't know. Um, not at the moment. I remember he built, uh, uh, made the uh, design and built a Velomobile for his wife. That small sort of thing that looks yeah. like a minky whale. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. I was like, what model is that? I haven't seen it. He said, oh, I built it for my life, you know, modularly. Yep. I was like, did you? That's phenomenal. He's a great guy. So I look forward yeah. to seeing him again next time. All right, let's move along. I think there's a couple more shots. So we got to see uh, the latest in the uh, in the wild development. And uh, uh, from my understanding, and John, you can correct me, uh, Stefan tells me that they're kind of working on uh, making uh, a wild that's even faster and more sporty. Uh, it's the most... Uh, flexible design that's out there in, in Velomobile world, as far as I know. And uh, yeah, so I think they're trying to find ones that are even maybe lighter and more sporty. Do you know a little bit more about that, John? Mm, that's not off the top of my head as far. I did interview him, but there, there's been <laughs> there's so much uh, footage and interviews and stuff that um, I can't quite remember yeah. what we what we talked about. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I remember from talking to him. And I, yeah, um, and it, it's so yeah, a real flexible design. And as you can see, John was talking about a little earlier. You might notice that the weather turned sour a oh. couple of times uh, yeah. outdoors, and we were lucky to be under the tent there at uh, Katanga. Mm -hmm. And that poor little kid there, he well, he looks like he's doing all right. But yeah, uh, I don't think there was any. Uh, you couldn't. There wasn't any. Uh, they didn't have any whales to test ride on the. Oh, tent. okay. Well, that yeah, may which be is a bit a bit of a shame. Um, yeah. Yeah. Usually they I mean, do. That's the way of Spetsy. Some some bikes, you know, you really want to ride and you can't, which is a pity. Right. Yeah. Right. And you have a wow, don't you? Uh, not anymore. No, oh, you I've, did. I've, I've sold it. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I, it wasn't getting used as much because you know I just found the quest a bit more comfortable for, sure. for city riding. Of course. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah, this is the day's getting later. It's Sunday. Uh, we were up on the balcony, and I saw John down there at the Rotter Works. Uh, talking to some folks. I, I, he was getting mobbed again, as I, I oh, yes. yeah, there's uh, <laughs> There's the officer. And there you go. He's uh, talking to a fan there, explaining yeah. what he does mm -hmm. or oh, telling him to stay away. I don't know. What yes. <laughs> I don't think that was it. All right. No next closer. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> and yeah, so there we go, folks. That was uh, that was our the end of our Sunday there at Spetsy. Another great year. Uh, with lots of interesting things. So uh, to finish up here, folks, um, I want to uh, talk about uh, what's going to come from uh, what we all shot and all the work that we did. You want to come on back to me, please, if you could, uh, Lars. Thanks. So uh, first of all, let's uh, let's talk to Brian. Brian uh, shot a ton of, um, uh, of of pictures, I know, and he's uh, working on his uh, his reviews right now for everything that he saw. Brian, uh, what's the status on that? What, what did you see that you're going to talk about in general, and uh, when you think it'll be available? Uh, I held a few things back. It'll be up Tuesday. It's actually uh, all pretty much done there's something else that we wanted to put up tomorrow and then uh, i have to make a couple phone calls tomorrow to europe and get a clarify a few things but other than that it's pretty much done and ready to go so tuesday you should see that i usually put stuff up i call prime time seven eight o'clock at night usually is uh the best time to post things so you will see all that uh i uh, you saw most of what I'm going to talk about on here. There are a few things I think that we didn't, and maybe I might add a couple things after watching this. So that's why I like doing these shows. It's kind of a cheat sheet for me because <laughs> I'll see something that Gary picked up that I didn't pick up and I'll be like, Ooh, uh, that's I, fine. I'll, I'll look well, that up. But uh, yeah, so look for that like Tuesday evening. Um, sounds good. That's on Bent Rider, folks. He didn't yes. mention, but of course. Yeah, BentRiderOnline.com or BentRider.bike if you want to use that. Very good, Brian. And yeah, of course. 
feel free to use whatever we got. Uh, yeah. And uh, we're always happy to have you on these shows. I mean, you add so much, you have so much depth and well, background and, that and, really helps us out. We appreciate it. And that, that show is just, you, it's, it's not big, but it's, it's impossible to catch everything. Yeah. No matter no how one's many people catch you bring all. with you, you're not going to catch everything. Yes, no, that's, totally that's true. And John, yeah, let's go to you. So uh, John uh, is of course, uh, has his YouTube channel called Velo Ads, uh, where he uh, pontificates and shoots video all about Velomobiles. Uh, it's greatly entertaining. He does a great job with the music and the video. Uh, so you definitely need to subscribe to his channel. And John, tell us what you've got in mind. I know you got a ton of video to go through yet too, but tell us what your uh, plans for the future are for your Spetsy stuff. Well, yeah. So, Gary, we've got, um, as as you'd imagine, lots of uh, footage of Velomobiles and interviews to go through. Um, I like surprises. So, one of the I, I was pleasantly surprised when I rode the Lieber or Lieber. Lieber, uh, yeah. Yeah, the Lieber Classic, and um, I, I wasn't sure that I was going to be enamoured with it, but I absolutely loved it. Yeah, it was it was just a really nice Velomobile, well made. Um, beautiful ride. The windscreen worked brilliantly. Uh, it, it mostly because it was raining at the time as well, so I was relieved to be in it. You know, um, yeah, that was one of the the, the, the top surprises out of the Velomobiles that I rode. Yeah, I was chuffed with that. It was just a really nice machine, and Vasily has made like he's such a hardworking guy. He's made around two hundred and fifty of them by hand on his own. So yeah, they're just charming. Yeah. Really I don't know cool how else to describe. They're just very charming. And then the Alpha Seven, which was uh, a highlight. The Milan as well, another highlight. So yeah, I, I love the Spezzi, and I'd advise everyone to at least try and get there at least once. I mean, I'm going to go again next year. I think I'll be there every every year now, checking it out because it was just brilliant. And I I missed so much as well. I you know I went around. I thought I'd covered most of it, but. I've seen loads of stuff on your on the show now, Gary. That I, I didn't. Even see. <laughs> this is why it's so great to do this, right? And of course, uh, you know, seeing what you guys have is, is something to remind. We we just it's huge, folks. There's two large parts of this. One is you can't get to everything at Betsy, so it's great to have all of us out there working. The other part you might have noticed is that. You know, spetsy has been a couple, two and a half weeks ago now, and uh, John's uh, put out a small video, and Brian's still working on his. And uh, we, I, honestly, uh, I got back from Europe just this past week, and I'm going to get started on it all uh, tomorrow. Working on this stuff takes a long time. You, yeah, you work that, hard. That's work what hard people, don't, people don't realize how long that, it takes to edit. That's right. I, so, I, when I work on my Spetsy article, I can't use my desk computer. I have I go down to my kitchen table with my laptop, and I have a million brochures and things spread out. Oh, I'm sorry, I have my cam muted. Um, I have all the million brochures and things spread out. Like I just take over the whole dining room table to get mm -hmm. everything and. And I feel bad for you guys, Gary, though. I watch you around. You have your whole crew and you're shooting video and I'm just walking by with a pork sandwich. <laughs> it's, like, wow. it's, it's like it's it's so yeah. much easier to take pictures and notes yeah. than it is to do what you do. Right. But you got to do all the hard riding later. And to be honest, uh, Brian, it's good to see you uh, in, engaging in something besides, you know, filling your face with the, the local foods and, and everything. So it's nice to see you go to work. So I gained four and a half pounds. In a yeah, week. I know. It's easy. It's yep. the schnitzel, if nothing, and the beer, I yep. think. But yeah. all right. So we don't need to talk about that. But yeah, just to let you guys know, uh, it's there's there's a ton of hard work and it takes forever to do the editing and the writing and all the stuff that, that John and Brian and I do. So all that just to say, please be patient. Uh, we hope to provide something for you that you're going to enjoy for a long time and take your time to go through and learn a lot more about what we saw there at Spetsy. So uh, look for John's, uh, look for Brian's report, look for John's uh, uh, videos coming out uh, on his Velo Ads uh, channel. And then as far as uh, Layback Bike Report goes, uh, Lars and I are going to try something a little different this year. Uh, we're going to bring out the uh, special from Spetsy video, like I always do, but it's going to be more focused on the interviews. So uh, we're going to see um, all of the interviews uh, that I did, and you're going to see nice uh, secondary views and close-ups of, of all the bikes and trikes and velos that we, that we shot. But there's so much else that goes on, as you've seen maybe today, uh, around Spetsy. 
And Lars is going to uh, make a second video, and I think we're going to call it uh, Spetsy 2019 Unplugged. And uh, you're going to see a lot of the surrounding information, a lot of the surrounding things. You're going to see uh, the booths. He's going to he's going to take slow walks through the booths. You can see all of the bikes and trikes that are there, um, and lots of the special things that go on, uh, the test tracks and all that kind of thing. That's going to be sandwiches. in a special video. And uh, you're going to see a nice shot of Brian with a pork <laughs> sandwich. Uh, <laughs> I noticed also that Lars got in very close on some of that, and I don't know what was in there. Uh, but uh, Brian <laughs> ate it, so I'm sure it's okay. Uh, anyways, yeah, so um, you'll look for at least a couple of videos from us on Spetsy. Uh, I hope to have mine out, uh, the actual report, week or so. We'll see how it goes. And then uh, probably followed a week later uh, around that period of time for the unplugged version of the late back back report uh, at Spetsy. So we hope you guys will, um, will take a look at all that stuff. Uh, okay, so this is usually where we have the sports report. Denny was kind enough to kind of back off this week because we had so much else to talk about. So he'll be back next month with a sports report. Uh, and uh, let me tell you again about the fine folks who make this report possible. We have TerraCycle. From fairings to headrests, whatever accessory you need, Pat and crew have you covered. And trailside.bike. If you find yourself in Florida, near the Withlacoochee Trail, stop in to see Andrew and his crew. And Cruise Bike, their patented race and record-proven front-wheel drive geometry changes the rules of cycling. Now, comfort doesn't come at the cost of performance, but fair warning, your cheeks may hurt from smiling. And <laughs> Lightning. Surprising speed, comfort, and agility featuring the superior climbing quality that you've been looking for. Check out Lightning Recumbents today. All right, guys, please uh, please frequent those, uh, those sponsors of ours. We really appreciate it. We have a whole slew more sponsors that helped us for the uh, Spetsy um, uh, report. So we will talk about those guys on the videos, but we really, we really appreciate if you, uh, if you uh, let those sponsors know you, you saw them on the laid back bike report. All right, let's finish up with a few announcements. I saw, um, I think late yesterday, our buddy Peter Stoll, the bicycle man, uh, has a new offering uh, to show you. Can we show that picture? It's uh, apparently called the linear airliner. Um, so yeah, it's his linear folding linear. And uh, he's been working on something like this for a while, but I think he has a complete set now where you can uh, take it apart, put it into those suitcases for airline travel. So it's a long wheelbase touring bike for airline travel. And uh, so, yeah, there's his Prius. And I'm sure he gets, he gets everything in there. So I'm sure he gets that in there easily. So uh, he says it'll be under $4,000, including the luggage. And uh, this week, uh, second part of the announcement here, uh, there is the uh, 2019 Smoky Mountain Recumbent Rally in, uh, in Tennessee. Our buddy Larry Varney, I think, is, uh, is getting ready to head out that way. And, yeah. uh, and uh, also, uh, Peter will be there. I think he might even be talking, but he's going to be showing off his uh, linear airliner uh, kit right there uh, at the Smoky Mountain Recumbent Rally. A great rally every year that I have a hard time making because it's right after Spetsy and uh, – it, it's difficult for me, but I would love to go to that. So it's a lot um, of fun. I, I've been once, and it's it's really it's a lot of fun. Yeah, beautiful, and it's perfect Gorgeous for trikes, rides. right? Yeah, perfect yep. for trikes, especially. So closed course, it's great. Very nice. All right, and let's see. Let me guess, uh, guys. Uh, give you a little update. The next slide, if you would, uh, Trey. Um, let me give you a little update on our uh, on our videos uh, that we're still putting out, and what we recently put out. Uh, very successful video. The uh, the Bichetta cycle of uh, visit that we uh, that we put out, um, and there's the carbon uh, trike test ride that I did on the CT 2.0. Uh, that video is taken off very well. We we put that up a week or so before we left for Spitzy, and so if you haven't seen that, it's our visit to Bichetta cycle. Check out our uh, YouTube channel for that. And we still have one more uh, LBR your LBS video to put together. It's the Angle Tech one. Uh, with Kelvin Clark uh, uh, interview and uh, the shop, beautiful shop there in Colorado Springs. So as soon as I get done with the Spetsy stuff, uh, we're going to put that out uh, hopefully by the end of the month. And and, uh, and, Kel and Kelvin, the coolest guy in the bike industry. Oh, he is. There's He's nobody cooler than Kelvin. <laughs> he is a cucumber. 
uh, that he's he's just a great guy and uh, nobody nor, more knowledgeable, I no. think, than, than he is. So, all right. So that is what we got coming up there. We uh, we're going to skip over the viewer submissions this month that we were gone. We really didn't get much in the way of those anyways. But just to let you guys uh, know, remind you, if you've got pictures or accomplishments uh, uh, or events uh, that you want to share uh, on the show, please send them uh, to us at uh, laidbackbikereport at gmail.com. And uh, we'll share those uh, with the folks that watch the show. Uh, next month, I'm working on a couple of things. Uh, nothing to tell you yet, but we will announce those uh, shortly. Uh, I can tell you that our next webcast will be June 9th at 2 p.m. Uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing all you guys there. So well, let's begin to wrap it up. Uh, we get that next slide up. I want to remind you all about our clickable table of contents. That's how you can find all the things that we talk about in each of our shows. There's a little clickable link so you can jump back and forth or just take part of the show at a time and watch it and come back and watch more. So you'll find those in the uh, description below the video and uh, all the links uh, to the items mentioned in our shows also in the uh, description below. We'll put those down there. You can always uh, click on those, go directly to the websites and find out more about what we were talking about or our guests were talking about. Thanks to Brian and Bent Ryder as always for their promotional support. Uh, we sure appreciate that. And all of our panelists, you know, we can, uh, why don't we get uh, Trey and Denny back if we can. We can put everybody up for a second. I'll say a quick goodbye. You guys did a great job today. We can probably take that. Uh, let's see. Can we do that? There we go. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Um, we Night really time has fallen in London. Yeah, look at that. And yeah. So, folks, if you're, yeah, if you're looking at the screen now, can you tell us, who, what panelists are in Europe and what panelists are in the U.S.? <laughs> because the Which? panelists in Europe are quickly fading away. Yeah, no. John, is, John is a stickler, as you can see, for his lighting. He's got yeah. one bare bulb in his ceiling. That's his. That, there, there he goes. I'm sure he's working. Oh, out. yeah. Ran him off. Yeah, you can tell a video guy. There we go. There, yeah, there. There. Yeah, yeah, now we get to see him. Yeah, great to have you back with us, my friend. Anyways, yeah. thanks a lot uh, to all of you guys uh, for being on the show today. So hope uh, hope you uh, oh, to the guys who were on uh, Lars and Brian and and John. Thank you so much for sharing everything that you did with us, and uh, for Trey and Denny. Thanks for uh, handling the the uh, slideshow and the uh, and the chat uh, Danny appreciate yeah, all that okay okay guys a lot of fun. all right uh, so yeah how about the subscribing to that YouTube channel uh, it's a layback bike report uh, you can uh, click on our logo uh, in the uh, lower uh, uh, lower right hand corner there and um, and you can uh, go directly to the the YouTube channel and you'll get uh, uh, a little uh, notification bell. Do that and you'll uh, get a notification for all of our uh, shows when they pop up. And the uh, little white eye up there, you'll see that. Uh, more information. Uh, it'll take you right to our website and find out more about the Laid Back Bike Report. So the website looks a little something like that back when I was wearing glasses. Uh, and uh, I, I, if you go to the website, you'll see, um, first of all, our sponsors. I mentioned a little bit uh, earlier, please uh, support them. You'll see all of them at the top of the page. You can find our most recent show, our upcoming shows, our past shows, bonus material, stuff we don't put in the shows, you can find there. And you can sign up for our mailing list. You can also buy a hat. And there's uh, the Smoky Mountain uh, uh, Trike uh, Show, uh, Smoky Mountain uh, Trike uh, Tour. Larry Varney is there right now, and he's probably wearing that hat on his trike. So uh, $20 plus $5 shipping and handling will get you a hat, and uh, we would appreciate it if you uh, if you did that. So you can find it all on laidbackbikereport.com. So, folks, until our next webcast, from all of us here at the Laidback Bike Report, so long, Bent Riders. <laughs>